All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Three Comic Money on CBSI, uh, comicbookinvest.com. Uh, this week, we have an awesome guest who's actually done an interview with uh, Mike Morello before, uh, John Boy Myers. Uh, we're super excited to see what, what category he's chosen and what books we're going to go through with him and share and talk about and everything. And um, John Boy, as we normally do, um, you get to pick the category first. So oh. or not the category, sorry, the card first. So oh, okay. You get to pick right. the theme. All right. Well, you already picked the category. Yeah. Okay. So, you know what? I'm a middle child, so let's go to the middle card. Okay. All right. right. Mike, what you got? I'm going to go uh, right hand side. All right. You got three? All right. I got one. Oh, let's see. I don't even remember where I put it. <laughs> Come on. <girl. laughs> All right. Ooh. Looks like I'm going for number one. Right. Influential artist. Okay. So this was an interesting category, trying to think through like what you wanted us to do with this inter- influential or future future artist and everything and trying to think through it. So as you talk about like Jumbo, what did you sort of mean when you sort of started talking about influential or future sort of theory? I, I think for me, for like like artists who are impactful on me, like growing up, like, I think for me, like um, I was really big into manga because like, I guess when was this like early mid eighties, early eighties, you know, we had Dragon Ball Z come in. Yeah. Uh, and then a couple of years later, there's this thing called Ninja Scroll that came out that just totally blew my mind. And love Ninja Scroll. It, it wasn't because there was like X-rated nudity in it or violence or anything like that. It was just, it was really well done anime. And I was a big fan of the Marvel ones and Transformers and the G.I. Joe cartoons and everything. And uh, uh, when I got my hands on that, it just totally blew my mind. It was the, the movement of the characters, the expressions, uh, the action, everything just was really just it really got me really excited about drawing and, and watching anime. I thought, oh, all anime was like this. And and that went to Bubblegum Crisis and uh, Writing Bean and uh, uh, some of the other like Gunsmith Cats and things like that um, were, were other animes that I like. But uh, so I kind of started to gravitate to artists that kind of have that anime feel. Um, and I, I'd already known who uh, Michael Golden was. I didn't know the guy by name, but when you saw his art, you kind of knew. So I grew up on Micronauts, you know, early yeah. 80s. Um, it, it was guys like Michael uh, Michael Golden, and then uh, artists like Arthur Adams came around, and he influenced, like, just about everybody. Um, and that led to guys like J. Scott Campbell and Jason Pearson and Joe Manarera. And all those artists, for me, kind of had that kind of manga-esque influence to their work, whether okay. it's the movement or the big eyes or how they did action. Um, their sense of storytelling, everything was always a sense of motion. Things were happening, even in still panels and things like that. Uh, expressive shapes, dynamic shapes. Uh, it was just stuff that was just the complete different norm of what I usually got from comics, which was uh, mm-hmm. back in the day when I grew up with like, uh, I grew up on war comics, which was like mainly uh, Alfredo Alcala and uh, Joe Cooper with Weird War Tales and Sergeant Rock, where it was very kind of like standard comic book style but yeah. opposed to you know this anime style which was totally something like night and day. Yeah. Ooh. So I'm gonna be very curious to see what your books are. What three that we're gonna look at and sure you can talk about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just from hearing what you're talking about. Um I'm gonna jump my my first choice for that I'm gonna okay. talk is I must cheat a little bit. And I'm gonna go with a trade, but mainly because it's a Walt Simonson uh it's, this is the entire series of Beta Ray Bill first appearance. It's just sort of a great cover. Um, and also I couldn't find the, everyone's, the, was it 337? Uh, yeah, I found a cover where he's smashing the Thor logo, which, yeah, he, which I mean, if I open it up, it's the, yeah. there it is. Uh, uh it's yeah, inside yeah. of here. I just couldn't yeah. find my copy. It's hidden away in one of these 12, 25, 30 boxes behind me. <laughs> but, and I think uh, Walt still owns the original of that. He does not sell his originals. Very oh, smart. Oh, wow. Here. So, yeah. But so, Simonson's, smart. Simonson's just one of those guys, like you look through and you're like, Whoa, the style changed with this issue, and then you realize it's him. He he changed like a lot of times. Uh, Star Wars, like when he took over doing some of the Star Wars books, you're just like, whoa, it changed. It, I love some of the covers that he did in the Star Wars series, and then of course this one. And then uh, there's a modern book he did, uh, in- Indestructible Hulk. Uh, he did did oh, some of those. Oh yes, yes, yeah. And yeah, you're Wars, just like Hulk is armor, like ah, yeah. Know. I loved it because it, it drew me into the Hulk books before the entire. Uh, Alex, Alex Ross, Al, Al Ewing thing, but like Indestructible Hulk, I love that little series because of Simonson, what he did. But the, I mean, this is by far the first, the, 
that Thor series, just the way it was influenced. And then I love the fact that it's him and his wife. And that, that little combination makes it just so much cooler to me in my mind. Yeah. And then that he quit drawing it and he kept writing it. Like when you guys, I love artists that can do interiors and covers and, and like they have a little bit of everything. They, they're not just known as one thing. That just yeah. is always something that's really cool to me. And especially back in the day, that's what a lot of artists did. Because, hey, I, I got a book. I got to get everything out. Because you're not you're not paid just to do the covers back then. So No, no. Like, yeah. you have to be a, like a fantasy painter or something like that. Like, covers were kind of like, usually covers were just, it was back then, it was, it was uh, one and a half times your rate. Mm. Nowadays, it's not like that now, which is kind of sad. But, um, <laughs> uh yeah, usually if you did the interiors, you could do the cover. But, you know, this is back in the days when, you know, teams would really talk and, and there would be time. I mean, this is when you had to have three issues in the can before you even advertise them in previews or anything like that. Nowadays, it's just right up to the print date, you know, where you, we work. So um, now be, being a cover artist is its own thing, which is it, kind of cool in a certain sense. But I, for me, I like doing interiors. It just it's not conducive anymore because the time I spend usually on a cover nowadays kind of, it, it can, it can take up to two weeks to just get a cover finalized and approved. Mm. It's just like, it's like I used to do them in like two or three days back in the day. So it's just like, Oh wow. I didn't realize they would, it yeah. changed that much that they, you had to be that good at, or that many edits had to go into a cover before it goes out. Yeah. It's, um, it's really weird because especially if it's a kind of a spoiler cover, like we were talking about oh, Robin yeah. earlier, and sometimes putting a character like that on a cover may spoil something. So you could be in certain production on it. And like, no, 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 you know what? We decided we want to change that. We want to put, you know, Black Canary on there instead of Robin King. And you're like, that's dumb. Yeah. Well, you know, and you're like, well, <laughs> well, and you're just like, yeah, didn't we have this conversation before? I said, we want to, we're like, no, you know, but you always, there's so many crooks in the kitchen now because comics are, are brands. It's, it's, it's it's very corporate. You got to think of it in terms of you're doing uh, a, an illustration that's going on a bag of potato chips, and it's trying to advertise you know these potato chips and how awesome they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's everyone who wants to weigh in on that and saying, okay, this is th you still have a lot of freedom, but you know there's a lot of people that weigh in from the top down on what they want in that cover sometimes. So, do you ever get told like we needed to look almost like the art on the inside, or? Do they even care these days? Uh, they don't really care these days. Usually, they leverage, they leverage whatever following you have in order to do the cover. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, like back in the day, though, I mean, there was a big s stigma against like cartoony artists, and I kind of fell into that category, mm -hmm. where I couldn't do a lot of uh, co covers of my own books just because I was too cartoony, and I'm just like, I'm good enough to do the interiors. I can't do the covers. Yeah, like, you do the cover. <laughs> but it's really frustrating because things were skewing, I think, early 90s, more realistic, and everyone wanted everything to be kind of like very, you know. Uh, I'm just cracking really, up, like, how many muscles is realistic? Like, uh, the, like all I remember about the 90s <laughs> is, like, these giant muscles where they they turn and twist and the, the girl's yeah, bikini it's, does it's, things, and you're like, what? Yeah, it's, it's just. Waists that are that big. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's brand management. It's really more like, I think, well, early 2000, I guess, was more. But they don't want the cartoonier stuff. It's just um, every head editorial from the top down has their different way of doing things and what they want moving forward for the company because that cover is the face front of that of the company or that character or that flagship title. So I, I yeah. get it. You try not to take it too personally. It's just like, well, you know, that's fine. I'm good enough for this. It's just for me, they want something a little bit different, which. I don't agree with, but I understand, and it, and it, it's fine, especially with the big budget like big budget of TV shows and oh, yeah. Yeah. alongside some of those things too. There's a lot of money tied up in some of these properties. So I get it, you know, from, yeah. a, from that perspective. Yeah. It's kind of like the reason why you'll never see like a, a cartoony type Batman book, you know, I mean, Batman is a certain brand and they want it to exist and look a certain way. So as much as I would love to see a Humberto Ramos Batman book, yeah, I don't think that's ever going to happen. <laughs> I think it's, it would uh, you know, they probably don't think his style is conducive to Batman, even though everyone's just like, Tim Burton was amazing. Like, it would be awesome. But yeah. maybe he's talking about Spider-Man now, but I mean, it's just, it's it's really hard trying to kind of like break that glass ceiling, so to speak, or kryptonite ceiling or whatever you want to call it. You know, it's, it's really tough in order to, to do awesome. so. I got you. So, so let's see what your first pick is going to be here. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Your first pick goes back to the days where the interior artist 
actually got to do the cover. Yes, absolutely. So uh, I took the list that you gave to Mike. Yes. <laughs> Everybody knows this cover, right? Like Paul Smith yeah. took over uh, right about when I think John Byrne was exiting. And if those of you who do not know who Paul Smith is, you've got to go pick up the Dark Phoenix saga and read it all the way through. It's it's uh, it's mm. pretty amazing. Or is it Phoenix Resurrection? Or what do they call this? The Paul Smith run? But uh, uh, the uh, Dark Phoenix was before hit this one. Yeah, I'm sorry. It was. Uh, I'm trying to think what issues this was. This was this was 173. 173, and it was basically the Paul Smith where Paul Smith and Chris Claremont come in and take over for the exiting John Byrne. Um, and uh, what they do is they kind of delve more into Wolverine's backstory. And this this whole issue is nothing but if you love Wolverine, this is when Wolverine was like super cool. Yeah, <laughs> and he was mysterious, <laughs> and he was in Japan, and he, he uh, was kicking oh, butt. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was I cool. love that stuff. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's such an iconic cover too. Like, I remember picking this up as a kid and trying to draw that same exact pose over and over and over. And uh, the funny thing about this pose is too is uh, Arthur Adams has a pose that's similar, but he said he based it off the Paul Smith pose. Huh. So uh, there's a lot of really cool artists inspiring other artists, inspiring other artists. So I was I, I always uh, seeing that. Yeah, I just that's thought, cool. Paul Smith did the Brood. That's it. his entire arc was when the the Brood race oh, yeah. that looked like the aliens. Yeah. All those covers. That's what he was. Uh, in the, which I have to admit, I'm one of those guys who did not know Paul Smith until I saw this cover. Like I oh, just okay. it, it wasn't a name that popped. Like I know this cover. I love that run. I read the story. I just never. Paul Smith was just not a name. Now I'm going in looking. I'm like, oh crap! What I read his books and I just didn't know it was him. Um, yeah, if you haven't yeah, read I got it, a whole box of those books in the other room. Oh, <laughs> yeah. That's your goal. Got them back here. If anybody who has not read that that run, you need to go and crack it open. I mean, it, it just it destroys whatever X Men stuff is going on now. That stuff is just it's so well written, so well drawn, so grounded. Like it's just is very meat and potatoes X Men. And uh, this is it was this run that kind of started because I think I think in the early like late 80s early 90s this is where x-men started to take over things from like avengers and things like that and avengers and stuff got really like kind of like crap books <laughs> was like, yeah you know it's all about x-men but uh, this is the reason why because those books are really good and uh hopefully people will not start doing homages of that cover because it's such an iconic cover and it's just like well, like I just pulled it up and looked at the uh, 168, that Kitty Pride with the spotlight on her where she's putting oh. her hands on the wall. Oh, yeah. The, like I have probably, yeah. I, have to, I buy that every time I see it. It's one oh, of my favorite great. covers. Yeah. I didn't realize it was Paul Smith. I love that cover. Yeah. It's like you're just just sitting here and you sharing one cover has opened up 25 covers to me by this guy. <laughs> oh, I just didn't know oh, it I remember did. this. <laughs> it's kind of weird to you kind of break through your mental Rolex. It's kind of like looking at old pictures of yourself like, oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's. Oh. Oh, I that's wore that. Love the show. Oh, it's I like, let my hair oh, be man. like that, huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the day, man. Yeah, this, this is what kind of got me excited about comics. Like, uh, and it's kind of weird, like having the conversations with you guys a little bit online, like uh, via text. I think it was with you, Mike. Like all this nostalgia stuff yeah. started running through my brain, and I started like, oh man, you know what? I'm a huge Barry Windsor Smith fan, so I started looking at that mm. stuff again. I'm like, oh man, what's Barry Smith doing now? You know what I mean? It's just like, ah, that guy's got to come back to comics, you know? Um, yeah, it's like old music. Probably knows what I'm talking about, but except for you guys. But that, that Conan <laughs> stuff, like old music that he did. Just, well, you like that familiarity? I'm sorry, what? Wait. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry, you're both. They were both complimenting your comment at the same time. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, the Barry Smith <laughs> are really great. Archer and Armstrong is a really great run. And if you don't know, he did this. Uh, you can get the collected version of uh, Weapon X, the Marvel Comics oh. stuff. His yeah. run was so good. Like I, uh, Gibbon I think I his stuff lately. So I even started like I remember when I was first starting to read stuff, and I didn't know what was what. I was reading Rune. Remember Rune? Oh, I remember Rune. Yeah. He did all the covers for Rune, <laughs> and that got me hooked on him. And then I went back and saw all the Conan stuff, and that was the end for me. I'm like, oh, this guy's a genius, and that's the end of that. So, yeah, but Ruin of all things, right? Yeah, Ruin. <laughs> yeah, right. stuff. It was Ruin? Yeah, it was from the Ultraverse. You remember the Malibu comic? Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. 
know. I don't know. All I remember is that the back covers were like a puzzle, and it all fit together and made one huge rune poster. Yeah. <laughs> Just super badass back then. All right, Peter, what you got for your first book? Oh, my first book. Okay, let me let me uh, bring myself up here. All right, so my first book, uh, again, John Boy, I was digging what you were saying with all with the manga stuff. Oh, and yeah. uh, even your art style, I went with one of your uh, inspirations. Oh, yeah. I went with the uh, Joe Mad and we with Battle Chief just because I just I loved his art. I didn't see anything like what he did until he was brought it to me. Again, I watched like Ninja Scroll. I love Ninja Scroll. I love like Ghost in the Shell. Like I loved a lot of that stuff back in the day. But artist wise, not a lot of people were doing it back then in the '90s. So when when he took over the X Men, I was just Fascinated. Yeah, that manga DNA is really, really pretty amazing. When you look at how many artists were inspired by manga, when you actually start looking at it, you're like, oh yeah, he must have been a fan of this, this, and this, and this. And it's it's it, it's pretty exciting to look through an artist's kind of history. Mm. They're like, you know, their their closet to see like who were their influences, you know, and and some more apparent than others. But I mean, it, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's just the motion. <laughs> it's just the it's just the feel of it. It's just very, it just pops. It's almost sticker quality a lot of time too. Like with the heavy, the heavy black outline, like it just really just comes at you. I, I love it. I wish he'd come back to comics. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I messed up all the I know. I Mike, I guess like now you're third and fourth at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so do I get to go in this round now? I, yeah, yeah, we didn't skip that. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so I went, yeah, I, I, so I went with an, an artist that, that I felt changed at least the way people viewed cover art back in the 80s. And I thought brought, I, I don't know how, how one would say this, but sort of brought fine art to comics. And everyone knows I'm a fanboy of this guy. But I went with Bill Sienkiewicz. Oh, um, oh going for it. And I chose my favorite of his, although this might not be the most representative of the style we came to know through the New Mutants run of his that sort of made, made his name for him. But th first of all, I think this is his finest cover. It's a beautiful cover. But but Bill, he wasn't doing what anybody else was doing. It was this sort of manic, impressionistic kind of thing that just people saw those covers on those New Mutants books and were like, what, it, what am I looking at? This is awesome, but it's so different than everything else. Um, and I think he's sort of been a, he's been a chameleon over the years. He's continued to change and adapt in his own way to what he feels comics are doing. And it's always unique, it always feels his and nobody else's. And I love that. Absolutely. So that's that. I'm not surprised that was one of your picks. Yeah, I was just surprised. I know. I figured. I know. <laughs> I'm a foregone <laughs> conclusion. I really am. It, you know, I don't know if you'll be able to find it, but like these used to be in quarter bins, but Moon Knight, the original 80s series, oh, oh, yeah. 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 Not anymore. yeah, they were so well drawn. They kind of had a real, like Sienkiewicz was really inspired by uh, Neil Adams early on in his career, much like many guys were. And uh, he had a yeah. real beautiful illustrative Neil Adams style on Moon Knight. It was, it was gorgeous. And uh, I was a big fan of that. And when he switched, to the new mutant stuff, and I was like, "Oh man, I just can't get into it." <laughs> um, but I, I love his art. But like, don't get me wrong, his covers are like, like crazy. Um, but it, for me, it just when I think superhero comics in my mind, I'm always like, "That doesn't yeah. read superhero to me. It reads horror." But New Mutants is superhero horror. Yeah. Like, it didn't click in my brain until yeah. later in life when you're mature enough to read it and appreciate it. So. Shoot. Did he do the Demon Bear cover? I had uh, 18? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I had, uh, it was Brian Stelfreeze I was talking to at, um, I forget what show. I think it was in, I think it was in Detroit. And he was telling me the story about how they always used to seat him next to Sienkiewicz because they were, they do, used to do it in alphabetical <laughs> order. And, uh, and he tells this story about watching Bill do a, uh, a commission for somebody and it's, and it's an Electra and it's out on the table and, and Brian's looking over Bill's shoulder <laughs> and going, Bill, Bill, you can't sell this to this lady. This this is the worst commission I've ever seen you do. You just, you can't sell this. It's like, it's just a big mess, a bunch of layers of paint, whatever. All of a sudden, Bill pulls out this little vial 
of what turned out to be lighter fluid. And he just starts splashing it on the painting. And he goes, all of a sudden, this gorgeous painting erupted out of the out of the thing and and brian goes i never swear i'm never vo- i'm never i never have vo- volume i stood up and i go no way f you you're not a genius you're just lucky and he goes and then i went home and i tried it like a hundred times and could never get it to work so he is a genius it's one of the greatest Maybe that was a Maybe somebody's soul he threw off it. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was the um the Squadron Supreme guy who died, and they used his ink in the t- uh, trade paperback. Uh, oh, uh, and the blood. Uh, so oh, he wrote Squadron that? Supreme, like the first. Uh, Greenwald, Greenwald, the writer. Was it him? His blood that yeah, they put Greenwald? into the to the ink yeah. of it. I, I so. believe or into the printing of it or something like that. I think that was yeah. Greenwald. I believe. Great editor did the uh, Captain America U.S. Agent storyline oh, back yeah. in the nineties. Really great stuff. Uh, it kind of seems weird because like all the really cool stuff from Marvel movies is from the like seventies, eighties, and maybe maybe a little bit from the early nineties. That's really yeah. that's really good. Nothing from like current continuity is really making its way in there, which is kind of like well, except for Winter Soldier. Because uh, yeah, there are exceptions to that. Yes, because that that storyline was pulled in. But you're right. Most everything else, even when they pull it in, it's not quite as good as the original stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But. Uh, no, or they have to totally reinvent it somehow yeah, in order to make it fit. Yeah. Make it fit. Like, how are we going to put that in there? Like, oh, we can do it like this. Perfect. Fits. Yeah. Yep. So. All right. So I guess it's technically it's my turn again. So yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll yep. just right. we got I'm, it. I'm torn, torn down. Torn between. <laughs> I'll go with the basically the same character. So I'll show them. No, uh, one of my favorite guys and is the combo really. Is a Malieve and Bendis. We, you just talked about Moon Knight. Oh, oh man, I, I love the, oh, yeah. I love Sync, um, but uh, Malieve and Bendis that pair when they've done books, any book they do together has just blown my mind. Um, I love the Spider Woman. I think it was six issues. This Moon Knight's twelve issues. This Bendis' spin on Moon Knight is where it true you truly get the psychotic, crazy Moon Knight, and then it takes it further with uh, Ellis's run, and then. Uh, Oh, Smallwood yeah. to the next set. I can't remember who wrote it. Uh, Jeff Lemire. Like they they took it to the next level. But Bendis is who started it because you have the entire. He's spending several issues are beautiful where it's Wolverine and Spider Man and they're, Moon Knight's talking to him and they're not actually in the story. <laughs> you read through the entire story and they're, they're just the guys he talks to as he's fighting or as he's doing things. And you're like, Wolver- this is the best badass Wolverine drawing ever, and he's not actually in the story. He's just <laughs> he, Malib drew him in there or. I mean, shoot, when Bendis went to DC, it sort of saddened me a little bit because he had had such an influence on those Marvel characters. But now he's the Pearl and the Scarlet and those things that they're doing together over there. I mean, Bendis can write crime stories and he's found a couple of artists that can draw his crime stories. Yeah. Like Gaidos and uh, Mac and then, of course, Malieve. But Malieve and Bendis are the pair I'll, I just always think of and got me back into comics. His Daredevil run. I mean the the gritty uh, daredevil. Yeah, yeah, I liked. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, Marco Chetto, though, isn't it? Is it Chetto who's doing uh, Daredevil right now? Oh, that's gorgeous. Yeah, that was yeah, cool. along with Chip Zdarsky. Yeah, a little bit yeah. where it's not as. I mean, it's drawn, but it's not painted. But it kind of feels kind of like that same vibe where it's very street and, level. What is in Tedesco doing it too? Julian Tedesco. I can't. He's remember. doing the cover. He's, He's doing the covers. He's doing the covers. Okay. But those, yeah. yeah, that that entire run, the recent Daredevil run, is beautiful. What's and the story is fun. It seems like it is. there's always a different phase of Moon Knight phase, different version of Moon Knight for every series. Because one is oh, yeah. like totally ridiculous. One he's a badass. Next one he's like, like what am I reading here? Yes, yeah, <laughs> multiple personalities. He's the he's the god, an Egyptian god. No, he's just a spy. It's well, and now they've right? Right? He's like wielding Molnir now, and I'm just like, <laughs> like yeah, because is he a part of the Avengers now again? What's that? Um, then they bring him into the Avengers, uh, or no? He's like the curse of no, no shoe is like the new the Avengers storyline yeah. that's going. He just killed Mephisto, I think. Or is that spoilers? I guess like a spoiler. All <laughs> <laughs> there, which is weird. Never. With Mew. Um yeah, it's really weird. Like, like, like he can't use Molnir. It seems like everyone can use Molnir on now, but Thor. And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everyone is worthy but him. Like, it's just right. like, what did he do that was so unworthy? <laughs> I know, even Loki picked it up. 
Yeah, you just check it out, write your name on the card, and like get it for a week. There you go. <laughs> Like, You're like Loki, how could Loki pick it up? That doesn't make any sense. Come on, Gates. You're breaking your own. Rule. The thing is, when you break that rule too many times in continuity, it just yeah. makes everything that's special about that relationship not special at all. And it's just yeah. like, you just it definitely it. waters it down. Yeah, you just like, come on, dude. Like, <laughs> come on. I agree. Yeah. You're absolutely right. We can't have nothing, man. Can't have nothing. <laughs> Anyway, sorry. Okay, that's all, all right. right. Let's sorry. see what your second book is here. Your second book. All right, let me bring this up. Dun, dun, dun. You mentioned this artist before as well. Yes. Oh, Arthur Adams. Yes. He's a super influential. Yeah. Now, who does not in the right mind know this cover? When you see it, you just is yeah. like, man, this is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there, but, there's something about his work that is just quintessentially just, just epic. Like, he probably single-handedly inspired probably guys every major artist from the 90s was probably inspired somewhere or another by uh, arthur adams whether it's tom mcfarlane or or jim lee or, or rob liefeld i mean all those guys all those image guys uh, probably were mm -hmm. probably, like minds blown when they probably saw this guy's work because yeah. when i discovered him was the asgardian wars annuals um and i was just like who is this guy yeah. And somebody told me, he drew long shot. I'm like, who's long shot? So I made <laughs> arguments for long shot. And then the, the book was like $30. And like $30 to somebody in the 90s is just like, I might as well say it's 200 bucks. It's like, I can't afford this, man. I got no money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, pretty awesome. Absolutely. I had to go look up what when you said our Asgardian annuals. Like, what are you talking about? And then it's like, oh, those Asgardian wars. I remember those right. annuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not the new one that they just rehash again. Yeah. The, again, like, you guys already did it. Why are you doing it again? I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> the first time, so do it again. <gasps> well, is it one of those little things they have to? Uh, I know that like to hold on to the name. They have to mention it so many times throughout every five years, or otherwise, just Could like be. Captain Marvel had to be mentioned because. That entire now we now Marvel owns it versus DC had it for a minute versus, uh, so I wonder Could if it's right. like right. Why can't they both share it? <laughs> what? Well, no, they don't share. They, even though they share, uh, was it Wade, Wade Pool and De, or Wade Wilson De, and uh, Dead Slade Wilson and they make fun of each other with their names and titles of characters. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, they're basically, kind of inspired by the same character, but Deadpool's kind of like Spider Man with guns and swords. Mm. But it's kind it's of swearing. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of swearing. Are you guys Arthur Adams fans? No? Yes? I like Yes, it. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I no like doubt. Absolutely. Again, it's like his pencil work and like just the fine lines, just the details. If you actually like zoom in, like you can see like a little bit of cross hatching there, like really in it. It's yeah. Phenomenal. Oh, and yeah. the same way that I'm probably going to say that one of I'm sure it's one of Peter's picks that it has to be one of Peter's picks today. I won't spoil it, but there's another guy that uh, I feel the same way about. Yeah, that I'm sure is going to be. Okay, we want to shift orders so we can go clockwise. Do you want to go before me now, or do you want me to just? Go? No, no, let's let's, let's stick with it. No, stick with it. You go. All right, I'm going to go. Uh, so like, here's Jim. You Lee. mentioned like who Art Adams could have inspired, <laughs> and this is one of my favorite artists. From you know back in the nineties, I tried drawing. Like oh. I used to draw when I was younger. I went with Jim Lee, and this is one of my favorite Jim Lee covers. I almost sent you guys that cover too. That that's like a fourth or fifth on my list, man. That's yeah, I love this cover. I don't know what it is about it. I mean, it's just the lineup. I drew this. I don't know how many times, like just trying to emulate the style of, of Jim Lee with this one, and I had to pick it. I wanted to go with this because I actually did get this from uh, Brent over the IG Comic Store, which is X Men One. Oh. And he sent me a signed Scott Williams book, which I, again, Brent, thank you. I wanted to go with this just because it's, I don't care if there's 8 million copies. It's still X-Men 1. Like, everybody has it. It's its great. Folds out. It's like four, <laughs> like four covers in one. I think I've got 10 copies of that X-Men issue that you've got. Oh, I do. Because I loved it so much. Because this is back in the 90s where you come for like a buck, buck 25, and you, you saw him, you're like, I'm going to buy a bunch of these. Yeah, I'm going to get the whole set. I want all of them. I want the A, B, C, D, and I want all of them together. I just want a the double set because I, I, I have one next to me while I was drawing, you know, and then you have one that you don't touch and you have one that you read. You know what I mean? It was just kind of yep. like, man, I miss those days. I miss, I miss those days. 
comics for a dollar, man. Me too. Well, I still buy comics for a dollar, yeah. but not as it easy was, to find the ones you want. Yeah, those classic, classic X Men you showed, they're like, oh, they're always in the dollar bins. I pull them out all the time because they're just gorgeous covers. Those are expensive and, covers, man. If you have books, if you can find them, because some of those ones have the John Bolton backups in it, which mm. kind of expand on the story. So uh, uh, the stuff that Chris Claremont didn't get to cram in. To the main story, he had John Bolton draw the backups to it, which are actually kind of cool. So, oh, I don't, I don't think I realized that. That's oh, cool. yeah, they're pretty cool. Yeah, man. They're really cool. There's a lot of fun stuff in there. There's, there's some good. I, I, I'm also a fan of Adam Hughes, and there's some cool Adam Hughes oh, covers. Some of those yes. ones, oh, like the yes. Phoenix, I think he did a couple of those. Like there, there's some good stuff in that classic X Men run. So I keep an eye out anytime I see them when I'm flipping through the cheap stuff. Let me ask you guys this, because you guys deal with variants all the time, like. What's the deal with all the homages right now going on? And like, they're not really homages. They're like just drawovers of like another yeah. art. <laughs> this, this, this is the thing, man. What? I think I think it's the way. So I think <clears throat> there's a lot of stores, specifically stores, that have gotten themselves entrenched in this store variant thing, which is fine. I get that they can make some money that way, right. but I think they're worried that if there's multiples of those, they need to stand out above the other stores. And so I think a lot of people gravitate toward what is sort of already a formula that worked at some point. And yeah. they say, well, if this, if this layout worked once already, won't our fans of this character really like to see this, you know, this character in a, in a classic pose that they're, that they're used to, like the, like the Spider-Man 300 pose coming out of the circle or, um, you know, a Amazing Fantasy 15 pose or something like that. Maybe. I'm just, I'm totally spitballing. I can be totally wrong, but they're playing I think it's a way to sort of... I can't, I can't, like... Yeah. Done it, like, dude, leave it alone. Yeah. Man. It's, it's like, it's like the mullet of comics now, you know what I mean? It's like, dude, don't do it. Yeah. Do something. Well, yeah. But you also got advantage of our nostalgia. That's all it is. You got the guys that are the completionist, and it's you'll especially if you follow Facebook groups and uh, yeah. Instagram. They brag about man, I have every co every version of Amazing Spider-Man three hundred, and like we we have a global comic wow. safari where they you try to collect the foreigns, and I completely get behind collecting foreigns. I mean, here's I mean here's a foreign you you try to collect or whatever. It's <laughs> it's the French version of of two fifty two, but it's it's a great cover. But now you got people trying to homage, and of course that's an homage to Amazing Fifteen. But now it's like, okay, do three hundred, and there, you'll see people, and they'll they'll brag about all fifty three hundred homages they have, and you're just <laughs> like, what? They're, you paid ten to thirty dollars a piece for each one of those things, and they're worth a dollar now. I mean, I think every yeah. and that's my thing with all of them. Like, okay, unless you're just a diehard Amazing Spider Man three hundred fan, why buy buy all those homages? Why buy all the you're right. I mean, it's a it's a gimmick. The gimmick works for some stores. I mean, it's there's a, weird. Like I had yeah. a bunch of requests for a bunch. Like, can you homage this? Like, <laughs> I like doing something that is inspired by that. You do yeah. your own drawing of it. Don't like just like yeah. You know, it's just basically a paint over of some guy's work. I'm like, should the original artist get a cut of you <laughs> doing that? Yeah, I I do yeah. like that idea too. That inspired by it's like the uh, the Hughes uh, Supergirl on the rock. But then, like uh, David Nakayama did one, like from like a different angle, where I think it was like Captain Marvel sitting on the rock. That's coming cool. Right. Yeah. From a different angle, it's like, wait a second, this is familiar. That's why, but it's a different take. Like I do appreciate when you can like kind of see behind the curtain of like where he got the idea or the. Well, especially when when the artist actually gives the credit. Like I love it. You see in the signature, they'll put like uh, at in the style of Arthur. After. Adams. Oh, they don't after. do that anymore. Yeah. Right. They don't. I love yeah. the after. It, after. It, 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 yeah. Like I did a I did a cover for uh, Superman Rebirth, which was the Bizarro one, or it, it introduces Bizarro Superboy, and they wanted me to do a takeoff of Patrick Gleason's Rebirth cover number one for it. And I'm like, like, well, just you know, do a mirror, mirror version of it. And I'm like, well, I'll do my own take on it. Yeah. But can I like? I still want to give Patrick credit. I reached out to Patrick like, hey man, you cool with me doing this? Because this is like. This is your work, you know, and I'm going to do my own take on it. I'm not going to just light box and do all this crap. I'm not going to do that. And uh, talking to DC, the editor there was Mark Chiarelli. He goes, hey, you know, we're going to make sure that Patrick actually gets a reuse for it, too, because we're homaging, homaging his cover. So he got some money out of it, too, which made me feel cool. At least I was told that. <laughs> and, and now it's on film. So you, they, he, Patrick could pull it up and go, John Boy was told that he. He was told that he was like, hey, my, just so where's my money? 
<laughs> the cowboy has like I got no money, <laughs> um, which, which is kind of nice because I think if you're if you're doing a reuse like that, maybe throwing the original artist some money might be. Well, yeah, at least with that, it did make sense because you were doing Bizarro, the Reflection World. Like it, it, it I could understand what why they were thinking that way. But like, yeah, you're right. When they when you homage something, like why? What what does the homage have to do? And I, I hate opening up a book and I'm like, oh great, it looks like Amazing Fifteen. There's nothing to do with this yeah, scene right. anywhere in the book anymore. And it has nothing. In fact, Spider Gwen's not in it. She's not even near Miles or whatever. Yeah, that's why I don't do one for ones anymore. Where people are like, yeah, we want something exactly like this. And you're just kind of like, you know what? That guy, Arthur Adams or, or, or Sienkiewicz or whomever, like, yeah, they did it better, man. Like, if you want something yeah. like this, hire that guy back again to do it. I'm sure he'd be more happy to do it. Because then he keeps his own, he's homaging himself. That makes it even yeah. more sense, you know. Yeah, like know. Part, yeah, but Neil Neil Adams did that with the the hug cover, right. um, like in the two thousands. The yeah. I guess he's hugging Wonder Woman in the seventies version or the, whatever that is, and then he's I, I, don't, know, I don't remember what the two different. It was Wonder uh, Woman in the new one. Wonder Woman when they redid right. it, right? Yeah, Lois in the seventies version, Wonder Woman in the new one. But like that's cool. It's the same artist doing yeah. sort of redoing that's cool. a, yeah. sort of a modern take on his own cover. So I, That's fine. I don't mean, I mean for these to be old man rants. I'm just always wondering. Like, <laughs> <All right. laughs> no, like, we're we're the right crowd for that. Yeah. Like, I'm always like, let's try to do something new, guys. Let's do something cool. Let's do this. Can we do that? Because if not, you're locked into this. Yeah. It has to be like this. And if it's not, then you're just like. Eh. Then that's all you see is the difference, why it's not like what you wanted to see. Right, right. And that's a perfect segue into yep. Mike's old comic book character he's about to pull out. For his favorite all right, let's do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, 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 something yeah. new, Mike. Okay, don't pull anyone from the 80s or 70s or 60s. <laughs> no, I, yeah. it's, uh, you're right. It, you're right. It'll be older than that this time. Uh, I went with uh, a guy who was influential in, in a couple of different ways, I guess, but I went with Matt Baker. Um, oh. So. <laughs> first black artist in comics, or at least generally considered to be the first black artist in comics. Um, also probably the most sought after good girl artist uh, influenced all kinds of people, probably Hughes and, and other Dave, people like that. Um, Dave Stevens for sure. I see a lot of Dave Stevens influence. Like that's probably Dave Stevens. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Nice, clean lines. Just, just beautiful, beautiful stuff. Sort of like timeless classic art, obviously very sexy, especially for the time. Um, and just was a master at it. I mean, there's he's there's a there's a high crap factor because of some of the things he was being asked to draw, um, and that's I'm sure not his fault. But I mean, there's so many of these beautiful books, the Seven Seas books, almost all the Phantom Lady stuff, um, just just gorgeous stuff. This is my favorite, um, maybe because it's the only blonde really that he did in this series. Um, but it just happens to be this was one of my grails. I, I acquired it fairly recently it's it's not the greatest copy in the world but it's a copy and it's complete um and it just I, I i get so happy seeing this on my wall just because i just think the, the art is so beautiful and I, and I think back to what he probably had to go through as a black artist during the time and and also now being appreciated for you know for that for that work now all these years later is, is pretty pretty awesome so yeah no good stuff Definitely good stuff. I, I can appreciate the, the golden age now of doing Vintage Voyage for a while with yeah, you know, with Ben and John Z. But uh yeah. And I didn't cool. expect to pull out I didn't expect to pull out Golden Age books tonight. I really didn't. There's enough modern artists that I love, but as I really started to think about what really makes me happy when I look at the stuff in my in my long boxes or on my wall or, or on a shelf, you know, and I, I try to go back all the way. Because I, because I thought like you did, Chris, at one point when you were doing the Malieve, the Malieve mm -hmm. Bendis thing, I said, you know what? I grew up on DC Vertigo, and that whole Neil Gaiman Dave McKean combo yeah. was mind blowing to me back then. Mm -hmm. And they continued to collaborate on a lot of other books, and I, so I almost picked, I almost picked like Sandman number one or something like that for the same kind of reason. But the art wasn't as inspiring on its own to me. It had to be the combo, like you, you said, like the, the story. It was perfect. I didn't pull one out. I didn't pull any of those out. But I mean, that that's like my runner up for the night, sort of, right? Yeah, I got you. Um, for the same kind of reason. And Chris, yeah. you brought that up in our chat, you know, a few days ago when yeah. we were kind of rapping about this topic. Man, that's a great idea. And it's so true. I feel like now, thinking back, nobody else could have done those Sandman covers except Dave McKean. It just didn't, wouldn't have felt right if it were anybody else. Maybe well, um, and those, I think those team ups are. Keith Craig Russell. Sandman 50s. Oh, yeah. 
that is a Dave McKean cover. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, no. I, and Mike, I think I showed it to you the uh you, the the children's book that McKean and him did that sold my dad for two traded my dad for two goldfish. For two goldfish. That ends up yeah. being the cover to Counting Crows' This Desert Life album. Um, but it's yep. such a cool book and it's McKean and it's McGaiman, it's just everything. I just think it's so cool. Like McKean has a style that fits Gaiman so perfectly. Um, I love when artists yeah. and when you get put together and it's like when they are together they do something special and there it's, it's such a cool thing yep. for me. And I, and I'm a, I'm big on the writer. Like I love a good story and a uh, solid, yep. sol solid artist. You talked about Ramos and Spider-Man earlier, like that entire Dan slot and Ramos little things. Oh, I know yeah. some people don't love it. I love that entire. And it's, mm -hmm. and I like it better when slot wrote it with Ramos. Like when, when slot writes and Ramos is not doing the, um, the art, it's not quite the same. Like for some reason it just fit perfectly um, with, with those, that pairing. Um, and I guess since I'm first again, I'm gonna go with my final you book. He's in your third and final pick. Yeah, and I'm gonna go. Uh, I, this was interesting and struggle, but I gotta go just show off because I have it. But also, when you talk about influential guys of the industry, yeah. you gotta go. You gotta go, with Todd McFarlane. We talked about Amazing 300. This is another giantly homage cover. Uh, this one's signed by Stan Lee and McFarlane, but of course it's PGX, so no one cares. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> uh, <laughs> What's wrong with PGX? Uh, for some reason, the industry or the the speculators have decided that PGX is not the same quality as CGC. So CGC is better, isn't that true? Hmm? That CGC, yeah, they've they've CGC. decided it's better, but it's just one of those like, okay, so that means anyone else that grades, it's it automatically means it's a cheaper book. Like it, that was a nine point two. If that was CGC, it'd be like fifty dollars more. I mean, that that's the the weird thing to me. I don't yeah. care. I'm not going to sell it. I just wanted to. <laughs> Signed Stan Lee book because you can't get his signature anymore. I mean, though it, though there's a thousand of them out there, I, I wanted to sign Stan Lee book on a Spider Man. Um, I, that was just something that, that was a goal of mine, and then to have it double signed by with McFarlane as well. But McFarlane, I mean, and especially because when you think of taking in the Spider Man series, he started and he is what you when you think of Spider Man in the early '90s, you think of McFarlane, like they're synonymous. Yeah. And then he took that and then he went into image and when i think of image comics i mean the first name is that comes up is mcfarland and then you think of larson you think of jim lee and it's, but it's mcfarland and then the rest of them and i mean and i think i just saw for me for me okay let me preface for me but when i think of image comics and the start of comic you think of spawn i yeah. mean and then you think of uh savage dragon then you think of wildcats but then jim lee went over to dc and took his characters with him so it's a little uh, a little bit different with Jim Lee, but like I think it's just such a cool thing to to those type of artists that did that. I'll, I mean, in in that time, they they decided because you guys were not treated as well by Marvel and DC um, as far as getting the credit for what you're creating and everything. Did, did you watch his uh, special on Sci-Fi? I want to. I heard it's good. Is oh, it it's good? not bad. It's not bad. I, I watched it. So. But. So yeah, I'm I'm a big McFarlane fan. I mean, I, I I hate to say I'm not a big Spawn fan, but I'm a big McFarlane fan. Oh, well, you don't like Spawn? It's I like deal. some Spawn. I just oh. haven't ever read it all the way through. I know oh. you've done all the way through. Well, it's a plus issue you, now. If you pick up uh, when I worked on the reboot from Resurrection Spawn Resurrection One, and then read uh, two fifty up until now, okay. it's kind of a more of a modern take. Um, so I was picking up the Sean Alexander ones. What's that? I was picking up the Jason Sean Alexander issues when they yeah, battle issues. run. Or the, so it's kind of weird. It goes from, because when I did it, we wanted more superhero horror. They yeah. went great horror again. Now it's superhero horror again. So okay. kind of moves So what back. issues did you do in there? Which ones? I did, I think, nine or ten issues. So Spawn Resurrection number one. And then uh, last few pages of 250. And then from 250, I think, to 258. Okay. Oh, nice. So... Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot more new reader friendly. Um, okay. and I know it's been selling like bananas now since it hit 300. Yeah. 300 was a big deal. Yes. Oh yeah. It was. I was like printing up money. Was, I, I probably read it. I probably read it through fi issue 50 ish. I was a huge spawn fan when I first started to read comics. Matter of fact, so much so that I actually did a redraw of issue number eight 
and it's, it was it's I actually got it published, which is amazing. I was like I don't know. <laughs> however old I was back then, and and I did the little silly thing at the bottom too. I put Morello after McFarlane on the bottom because <laughs> oh, because yeah. his was also already an homage to something. So here we are back down the homage rabbit hole. But I mean, I loved that cover, so dynamic, and um, and I think through the whole run, no matter who did covers, whether it was Capullo or or you or or whomever, they always had that dynamic quality to them and just they always were impactful to me um i think you were the perfect person to do those too just the right style for that impact you know, um, you know like, and that's not honestly no. you just changed yeah. my mind about like homage covers because for me i'm just like why do people do them now i get it now because people when you talk about it like this is talking about it peter like these made a huge impact on us and i think it's they want to do your, your cover that has that same kind of like it's paying fan tribute a little bit to that too now, which I, I kind of get now. I'm like, okay, it makes but it a little easier for me to be like, oh, all right. But if you were asked to homage a cover that you have no sentimental attachment to, would that just sort of frustrate you? Like, okay, yeah, I'll do uh, the the last, uh, I don't know, I'll do Teen Titans 12 homage. And you're just like, that just came out. Why am I homaging the Batman new? I mean, <laughs> I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd be like, hey, you know what? I'm probably not your guy for that. I, like I like to do new stuff. Um, if, if it's a certain special thing, or, or like if it's like a tribute book, it, it's kind of different. Like it would be really cool to do a Spawn tribute book or a Batman tribute book or something like that, where modern artists do homages of like classic artists. I think that would be actually really cool. Um, but so, would you ever do one of the the sort of our frustration in the industry is the. Uh, the, the comedy comics that come out that homage like the uh, Tigger and Pooh book oh. and the uh, the was it the the one that now is half naked women doing the oh. classic covers the uh, oh, or I don't, I don't really care for those like I don't no. it's, I mean, well, me either it's a money grab me. It feels like a money grab to me personally not my thing I've had a couple of my covers homaged for those which is totally fine I understand like. People have to make money. People have to eat. I get it. I just think it's just like, be creative. You guys can do something really cool and really different with those things. Um, but uh, I, yeah. I don't know, yeah, just I don't yeah, that's because because that's like the lowest level of homaging to me is like we're gonna do it. We're just gonna add a nipple and we're gonna sell them because people somebody's gonna buy it because we put a nipple on it. And like, oh, please just don't. You're sullying. <laughs> the original yeah, image. a little bit but i mean you know if there's a market for that there's a market for that and I, yeah. I i just i just think there's so much more to be had about doing something that's kind of a little bit more your own thing a little bit if you can absolutely and I, I think it's really great to do something where it's your own take on something where it's kind of like hey this is my love letter to this artist cover or whatever yeah. and, and do that and i think that's that's a better way of, of paying tribute to something and i i just like for me now, like now that I'm older, like when you're younger, drawing like you know nipples and stuff like that, I thought, thought it was such an awesome thing. Yeah. Now that I'm an older guy, like you know, I'm married, and it's it's you know, I if I was embarrassed to show my wife or my nieces or nephews, then I should not be drawing it. That's kind of like my rule now because exactly. they're they're super impressionable. They're always watching me, what I'm doing, and 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 how I'm presenting myself, and it's just like. You know, I, I don't want to be that reason why a little kid gets in trouble for, for getting into comics and things like that. Like, I don't yeah. Be, you know, yep. I don't want to get boycotted and be like, oh, how dare you? Yeah, it's, it's just not for me. me. You drew. Oh, it's like, oh, you know. Just, just <laughs> like that, you know. I was I, young. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> I, was I was 20. I will say, though, I was surprised by your third pick. I didn't see this this cover coming. Like, I remember this cover. Do you? Which one are we talking about? Oh, yes. Yeah, like, I remember this, but I would not have thought to go this way. Michael Golden, man, again, like he is, for me, he is the, the beginning point for all that is awesome. Michael <laughs> Golden, uh, like he inspired Arthur Adams and all these other guys. And uh, I mean, look at that. Look how dynamic that is. And it's like, yeah. it's G.I. Joe, right? And it's just like, wow, that's so awesome. Um yeah, so dynamic. Like if uh, these are really, if you can find this issue, it's, it's kind of hard to find, but uh, G.I. Joe yearbook number two, 
I mean, it's got really cool ninja action in it. They're fighting the the uh, this, the October Guard, this Russian GI Joe group. Uh, it's Desperate on the Baroness. It's it's pretty awesome. Like, uh, and it's got Snake Eyes front and center. So it's like, Absolutely. what's that like, man? You know. So, um, yeah. Uh, Golden is just the the artist artist in terms of like dynamic poses and, and just a lot of bounce and shape to his work. A lot of cool tech, a lot of detail in his work, and then his his how he draws like all, all the stuff he uses, like most of the stuff he's drawn, like he doesn't use, he does a lot of freehand stuff with vehicles and things like that. So when you see the vehicles in these issues, they're like G.I. Joe spot on vehicles, man. And th those vehicles are hard to draw, man. Believe they me. Are. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, yeah. yeah. Now, did you have the original art? Did you it? use me? No, I wish no. I, I, I wish got it. Mike gave me this, and I was like, "What is this?" <laughs> oh, that's the scan. That's the original to it. So that is, I found that online. Okay. Yeah. Um, like, wow, this is awesome. Yeah, it's it's pretty dope. I, I think if I own that, that would be that would be pretty awesome. That that probably right there is probably out like probably twenty or thirty grand. I'm sure. So, oh. um, yeah. But yeah, I, think so I like the flag. I like the flag in the background. But when you take it away and you can just see like the the grouping and the pencils, like it. It, I don't know. It's just something different. Like it pops more. I, I heard a funny rumor that Jim Lee actually owns all the pages to this GI Joe oh. yearbook number two. I believe it's two or three, but I heard the pages are starting to yellow because Mike used Sharpies to fill in all the blacks and they're starting oh. to yellow. It's kind of like, <laughs> why? Why? But this, well, that's why it happened to all my old art when I was a teenager back yeah. in the day. Oh, okay. Just using the Sharpie to fill in the black. <laughs> yeah, but you're drawing your ligers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's just great art, man. Like, uh, I don't know if people are familiar with his work or not. Like, for me, uh, I first discovered uh, Golden uh, on a series called Micronauts, uh, written by a guy named Bill Mantlo, who actually created Rocket Raccoon. Um, the late, great Bill Mantlo. No, wait, Bill's still alive. Never mind. So he's, he's still alive. Um, he's still great, though. Yeah, he's still great. He's still great. Um, but uh, if you can find those issues, I think IDW is actually reprinting those into one of those big master books, the okay. Micro uh, Micronauts run, which is well. There's and amazing. there's supposedly the rumor that Amazon has put it forth to do an animated uh, Micronauts uh, that came out, I guess, last year. Because oh, uh, okay. like all of a sudden, all those issues dried up online. You couldn't find like one, two, and three uh, from it. Uh, I think three had the character Bug premiered, which is used in uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. Uh, but yeah, that's a great, that, that little Micronaut series, the first 10 or 12 issues were just great. I think, uh, was it 10 or no eight is uh captain universe. Right. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Every time you guys do a plug on like, Hey, speculators corner, I'll go on eBay and magically like instantly everything jumps 20 bucks. I'm just like, <laughs> and the only bad thing is that like I shouldn't we shouldn't say anything because I don't have the book. I like I need yeah. to have that book before I say anything. Like yeah. now all this book, no one gone. cares about this. <laughs> no, it's all yeah. about Robin King now. Like that issue he's in, it's like, oh my god, it's Robin King. It's like mm. who cares? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I did not I am not going to run out to the store to go grab spend three hundred dollars on that that variant. I think it's a great variant, but three it's, it's not three hundred dollars. Uh, oh, I it love was, the cover. I just don't know. It's some it's the people are selling for one fifty tonight, and who knows by by Wednesday, Thursday, Friday when the show premieres, it might be three hundred again, or it might be back down. But it still amazes me. Oh, I, it's, baff, it's baffling sometimes. I think I saw uh, Carrie Andrews posted an Instagram uh, thing. He's like, "Got mine from this. Got mine from DC today. Here's twelve hundred bucks." And he had showed it showed four issues that he would just gotten from DC. <laughs> He's like, "I might auction these off tonight." <laughs> <laughs> he was joking. He's, he well, said, I'll, I mean, I'll give him away for free at, at some point. Just follow my Instagram. But I thought it was like, that's that's freaking awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, your your Venom cover did the same thing. That was one of those books that just inst instantly popped because it was like on a kid's book, who orders 10 copies of it sort of a thing. And there yeah. it was. And then, boom, it was a $200 book. Yeah, like I think I can understand that because it was short printed. But right. For me, it was just it was like a kid's book, so I was like, "Why do like why is this so important?" Nah, I read but, it. but your cover did not look kid; like it didn't look yeah. scared. But it, that that's what it made all every every guy out there went, and and it was perfectly timed. The movie was coming out or just come out, just so it was out. like a perfect yep. whirlwind of 
Venom movie coming out. The best yeah. looking Venom cover at the time comes out, and it's on a short printed book. I mean, I just felt bad that they were like yeah. selling for so much. Now they're like, I think you probably get them for like less than hundred bucks, which is, I think, pretty reasonable. Yeah. Given the run on it. So, because I, I talked to IDW, they said less than seven hundred fifty made it out. So. Yeah. Um, I'm like, oh, well, that's that, good. Not, that's good to know. <laughs> Mike's like, do I have three or do I have one? Oh, <laughs> hey, 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 go. I, just have, I have one copy. They, they probably printed up a thousand of them. So there's people in the office who have them and stuff like yeah. that. Too, so yeah. um, I will say I, I knew that the book was coming and I went to a shop that wouldn't normally have ordered it. And I made him order 10 copies and then I bought all 10 copies <laughs> to get the variant. <laughs> So, and I wanted that variant that badly, cool. and I still have it. So it means I didn't buy it to flip it. I wanted to own it. So, That's cool. just yeah. so you know. <laughs> For whatever All reason, right. that reminds me. Like I'm so mad my CGC order didn't come back because I actually, John Boy, I have one of your covers in my last order, and I did not get it back. It was what? the Snake Eyes number three. It was like the retailer incentive. It's kind of like a what happened to it. It's just there. They still have it. It's still in Florida. So I got to wait till they mail it back to me. They're still trading it. I just, they've had it for like a month. I've been waiting. I'm like, come on, get, come on. If you get back in time, where you got Did you buy it from the same guy I bought it from on eBay? He was like selling for like 50 bucks or 75 a pop. No, I, I, I don't know how I stole, I got it for cheap. I bought it like at an auction. I'm not going to. I'm like, how'd you get 25 of them? He goes, oh, I just met a guy who had a whole box of them. I'm like, uh, I don't know. One of, one of our uh, one of our buddies, uh, Tim Walker, he had mentioned the book and was like, "I've never seen that cover before." It's like, I dig it. And I'm like, let me look for it. I'm like, all right, there's not a lot. There's this auction. I was like, let me just throw a bid down. And I seriously, I want it for like ten bucks, like because wow. auctions when they when they end auctions like midweek when it's like an off time, you can see a fifty dollar book, man. Yeah, I stole it. Like right. I was like, Woo, <laughs> I did those covers for IDW. I never got any of those comps, any of my comps. I'm like, hey, oh. Man. Where, where's my contact? Like, oh, oh. you want to on this? I'm like, yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> like, we don't. Yeah, have I always want to. Like, oh. Yeah, no, I, I just, I love that. Again, I'm, a, I'm a GI Joe guy. I mean, I even wore my CBSI GI Joe shirt. I, I loved all my GI Joe toys back in the day. So I was like, I, this is cool. This is cool. Like, this Snake Eyes cover this is awesome. I want it, so it's mine. That's cool, man. Right on. Have you had what, any, what you get? What you get graded? I just said I don't know. They're they're still in the process. It's scheduled for grading, so I'm assuming it'll pop up tomorrow. But I'm not going to look. I'm going to save it until I get the box and be surprised when I open the box. Or they're running behind because I sent a bunch of books and they've had them for like over a month. I'm like they're behind. When I sent them, yeah. every everybody's saying they're super fast. They're super fast. But I sent them. They got them on like June 29th, and they finally got to scheduled for grading today. I've been watching. Okay. But they also had like every dealer since there's no shows, all the comic book stores have been sending them in. And then you had that uh, in July, like what it seemed like half the art, like 10 or 12 artists were all doing signings. Mm -hmm. So the, True. so you had all that happen. So they probably pushed everything back to make sure. And it's just the modern stuff. Yeah. Because the same, the same submission I sent in economy stuff because I had some old books. I had a giant size X-Men one, my Marvel spotlight uh, five, like I got those back already. Like they graded those in like two weeks. They're mailed. I got them back. I'm like, hey, who? I got my books. But the moderns they've had for weeks and there's been showing as received. Is it because it's more scrutiny on the modern stuff? Or like I think they just have more volume. Like whoever their modern graders are are probably just overwhelmed because oh. a lot of people I'm assuming don't send in the older stuff as often as the modern stuff because oh people are trying to flip it to make money. But I got my book again. The ones I sent in that were the older books, those are just my books. Like my giant size X Men, just mine. I only got it graded, so I feel like it's kind of encapsulated, so I don't have to worry about mm -hmm. accidentally destroying it in my box somehow. Like I feel it's a little safer <laughs> in plastic. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's strange. Like I'm always wondering, like like people like slab a bunch of books with the idea that it will make a lot of money, but. You can really lose your butt on it, couldn't you? you like, could. It's expensive. Like it I think expensive. for us, it's, we get a discount because we're creators, so it's a little cheaper for us. Because I don't think I could do it if it was forty five dollars a book plus shipping. I'd be like, yeah, it it, it 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 hurts. That's why when I when I do it, when I send it in, there's like at least a, a couple of books I know where I have to sell these to help pay for grading the ones I'm keeping. Um, and that's the problem. They have the ones I wanted to sell to help pay <laughs> <laughs> for the ones I'm keeping. So my wife is like, it's your wife, like, yeah, I've got uh, fifteen hundred dollars wrapped up in these. Yeah. Books. What's this charge? I don't understand. 
You're like, uh, well, well, a lot of guys, a lot of guys play the timing game too. Like they send them and they're hoping to get first to market with the graded book. And so if CGC turns them around fast, sometimes they can get the first nine, eight on eBay and they can jack up the price on that stuff. But that's a really risky game to play. Get it. If you're, you're really banking on that money. I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do that. I don't play that game because I'm not paying for fast pass. Like I just, you know, I send them in. You send them when they're done. Like I just hope to get them back in a reasonable yeah. amount of time. It's like I got to make some money. Come on. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's bad enough. I just need yeah. not even make money. I just need to pay for what I just mailed you because it's hundreds of dollars just cost me. <laughs> to put them in plastic. It's not cheap, man. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. The shit. All right, be- Peter. What's, what's if your you missed that window? Here? Oh, yeah. All right. yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, we we, we got we got <laughs> I got a little off track there. Well, I don't All understand right. some of this stuff, so I'm glad you guys are cleaning it up for me. I'm like, <laughs> this All right. My last pick, I did want to go with Hughes because I do, I'm a big Adam Hughes fan as well, but I actually did not go with him. I put him behind me, a couple of the books that I have. But I went with uh, John Boy. You mentioned him as uh, Matt Baker inspiring. I went with Dave Stevens, who is like my new love affair right now. I've been trying to collect whatever I can of Dave Stevens, and I went with his Planet Comics because it, I don't know. It's maybe it's the yellow with the red bike. I don't know the the girls on it. It's just it just captures something. It makes me want to draw again, and I haven't drawn in years. And this is just something that just really, really spoke to me. Good so girl. I've been buying a bunch of his stuff lately. Yeah, he was one of the first. Uh, my, I was sixteen when I went to my first San Diego Comic Con, and he was one of the first artists I met. I didn't know who he was. He's like, hey, let me look at your portfolio. I was like, okay. It's like, I'm Dave Stevens. And uh, I was like, whoa. And he goes, I do this thing called a Rocketeer. And I'm like, what's a Rocketeer? <laughs> no, like, because like, this is my first convention. I didn't know. Because like, I, I was a little like gobsmacked because at 16, you always had this idea of like what your artists look like. And I thought all the people who used to draw these buff guys, superheroes, were like fit themselves and they weren't. I'm just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm 16. I didn't know, right? But Dave was super cool. He uh, signed a lot of books for me. We talked about art, and uh, I met his wife at the time. Uh, she was really, really sweet. They're really nice. He's a really nice guy. When he passed away, I was really sad. I was like, oh man. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I get that idea because I've actually seen you at shows, but I haven't come up to you because I'm just like, I, I don't know what I'm gonna say. I'm just, I'm just like, yeah, what's up? I'm like, hey, how's it going? I know, but I, I don't know. I just get. For whatever reason, I don't go to a lot of conventions. I'm not a big convention guy, but I've gone to a couple in Philly because I live in South Jersey. So I've just hopped over to Philly, like the Wizard World and the uh, uh, the Keystone. And I th- I've seen you there. And I think, uh, dude, you should have talked to us at Keystone because we were all bored out of our minds. I know, and that's when I knew it was. The, but that was also put added pressure because it was like a lot of things were like empty. Like I remember seeing Ken Lashley was there, and I'm like, like there's nobody around. Like I'm gonna have to talk, and I'm like, I don't know what I was gonna say, so I'm not gonna say hey, anything. Hey, what's up? I like G.I. Joe. I like oh, see, I love I love shows like that because then that, I might actually get a window for an interview during that time. I could sit down and chat with somebody for a while if there's nobody around. Ooh, no, you know what uh, it was? It was Ranko terrified me. He was sitting there. He was by himself, and I'm like, uh, there's no way I'm going up and talking sure, to him. Man, don't like, <laughs> he's such a nice guy. You be like, hey. I know, but I don't know. I'm I was I was scared. I I'm, I can admit it. I was scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Peter, the question would be: Now that you've done these shows and gotten a chance to talk to artists, you're realizing that they they're they're fanboys too. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, like like first time I met Joe Matarera and Arthur Adams, man, about like two squirts of pee, man. Really, I was just like, <laughs> it's like you're, you're trying to keep it all in because, like, you know, you're kind of quote unquote pro too, you know, and you're like, okay, well, I don't want to embarrass myself, you know, but I don't want to geek out either. And this guy's like. What's wrong with this dude? You know what I mean? So, I do it. Um, but I mean, it, I think there's something. There's always it's it's always great to connect with people. You know, especially people who like your work and, yeah. and talk to them about it. Like, hey, you know, it's always good. You get honest feedback. Hey, I really like what you did. Like, hey, what's going on with this? Like, hey, you know, I like that you're pushing this more because that's good feedback for us to get. Yeah, good and bad. Like, hey, you know, I like yeah, what happened on this issue, man. What a stinker. Like, oh yeah, like this is what this. <laughs> story behind that is what happened and um yeah i think we're just you know we're just normal people just like we just got like interesting jobs you know i I, and i and i get it now it's just at the time when i was starting doing this type of stuff like it was all kind of new 
but like I think it was like last year I I got to meet Ron Lim, who is oh, also right. I'm, I, I'm a, one of his. My, I love Silver Surfer back in the day. Between X Men in the '90s and his Silver Surfer one with Jim Starr, I'm like like that stuff was just what I read. So when I got to meet him and I got to talk to him for a minute, I'm like I can talk to people. Like then I got a little more oh, comfortable. Wow, Ron Lim. Yeah, I got him to sign my beat copy of a. Uh, I think it was Silver Surfer uh, 34 or 35. Wow. It, it was the one with the uh, Infinity the Gauntlet. Gauntlet in the, like, the, the tr he's sitting in like the throne and like Surfer was by his side and they were just oh, kind of like, cool. he, he was showing like to start the Infinity Gauntlet bit. It was my beat, co like the, the cover was beat to hell because I tried drawing from it like over and over again. Like just, I'd have it next to my, on my drafting <laughs> desk and I'm just like, my elbows hitting it while I'm like trying to copy like, all right, how did he do this? How did he do this? <laughs> So it, it was beat to hell, and I just had him sign that. It's just for me. I still have it. Like, you should get it slabbed and hang it by your desk. You're like, yeah. <laughs> that one I'm not even gonna get slapped because I'm like, nope, this is mine. I'm still gonna flip through it because it's oh, mine. Cool. I've yeah. had it for thirty odd years now. <laughs> I got comics like that around my office. I should. It's under a stack of papers though. But uh, yeah, there's just ones that you always kind of go back to the well on. Like I have trade paperbacks. I've always flipped through. They're, yeah. They're first prints too, and you can't find them anymore. But all the pages are falling out now. It's like, oh, man. They, they oh just get you. there's that beautiful sink, yeah, uh, Uncanny cool X Men, the Dark Phoenix uh, trade paperback. It's like original. It's yep. um, it's one of Mike's Grail books. If he had, I think he finally got one. But uh, thanks but, to you, thanks oh, yeah, to you, the, the one that found it for me. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was the one who found it for. Me. But like the first copy I had of that, it was falling out. All the glue had melted, so like pages just fall out of the thing. You're just like. Oh, but I love it. It's so great. And the cover's so great, but it's falling apart and you can't really glue it back together. How do you fix uh, that? You just don't. You're like, ah, because like, they can, no. can, can't you get it restored? Like, can you like, Hey man. Yeah. You, probably, you put it, you put it in Mylar. You put it in Mylar. That's how you restore it. It looks beautiful. Everything looks beautiful. No, in Mylar. This is how you restore it. You get out packing tape and you tape each page back <laughs> in. <laughs> Oh. When I get older, I want I want someone to put me in mylar so I look better. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, ten years younger. Yeah, it's amazing how shiny he looks. All right, Mike, what's your last book here? Oh yeah. Uh, all right. So my, my last book, I str I struggled with my last book because it was between a few few people. I wanted to go with Stevens, but I knew that that Pete was going to go with Stevens because he and I have been kind of like this little contest for who's going to complete the Stevens. <laughs> The Stevens run first. I think he's winning by far, but I'm, but I'm trying to. Uh, we're we're close. We're neck and neck. But but no, I went I went old again um, because I'm I really every time I think about the Bronze Age, I always go back to Bernie Wrightson. Oh, um, yeah. And uh, and just what what he was what he was having to do with code comics, still having to draw horror seemed to me like this this mind-blowing thing if, when i think of who who's the best cast. pencils line guy i always think writes and um especially this cover this cover is just astounding to me every time i look at it i'm just i have to stop for a second and take a closer look at it speaking of covers that have been homaged a thousand times recently this is another one but i i love this cover it's beautiful i loved swamp thing uh when i was growing up again i was a vertigo kid and so this was this that was my original grail book like the thing i said i have to have one that was one of them um and i just i think between him and and you know adams and and those guys drawing the dc horror in the day once the code hit having to like draw little kids on their covers and, and sort of like manipulate things. So they weren't so horrible had to be a tough kind of a tough framework to fit into. And I've always admired that change and how those guys handle that. So, and Wrightson's the guy to, to me, he's the guy. Was that the, uh, was Alan Moore writing that too, or was that? Uh... Not that run. That's Lynn wine. He wrote that. Yeah. Book. Yeah. Uh, Alan Moore took over. In the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. The 80s. yeah with tw number 21 in the eight or 20, maybe 20. it was 20. 20 yeah. and then 21 is the big book. And then of course yeah. that's when you get Constantine and all of them. Right. All right. And that's the, cla that's the classic run from a story perspective. That's when I, I really feel like that's when Swamp Thing as a story gets really great. Um, although the story in house of secrets 92 is also awesome, but then the series itself kind of fell, fell well, off quickly. Creature to character during that transition when more got him turned more into character. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Green and everything. There's like the, Lighter scope of what Swamp Thing is, you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, didn't he like, change the origin, like from being a 
a plant mon like either a plant monster to a, a man who became a plant monster or something or the reverse of that something like the spirit and it I Mike, you're the spawn swamp thing guy. What like what did he change? It, it's the other way around. So it was it was that he he created sort of the idea that swamp thing was connected to the all the green things in the world. Essentially, okay. that he was the he was the overseer of everything in nature. Essentially, he was father nature in a way. Um, and then and then other people kind of picked up on that and they've expanded on it since then. But um, but yeah, he definitely gave a. a a much more uh, complex texture to the character that it, that it didn't have before, um, more of a third di third dimension to the character. It really was pretty riveting writing, and the, the interior art on those on those issues was also incredible. I just so, remember the '80s movies. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it'll hold well, up really all that well. There's a nostalgia to them that's kind of cool, but otherwise they're they're up. But the show, yeah. the, the the show that was on DC briefly was really awesome. It's too bad it got canceled. It's the shame. I think they're bringing it back. I heard they're bringing it back for the regular WB. Um, I hope so. TV, so um, yeah, it, deser it deserves it. It definitely deserves it. It was a really good show. I enjoyed it. All right, so John Boy, we have a couple of your pieces we want to look at and see. Sure. I want you to talk about. Can we talk about some of these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Right? Yeah, you did your third one, Chris, already. Oh, Starfire. Okay. Oh wait, yeah, yeah. We are we are all covered, right? Okay, we're, we're good. Covered. Okay. So um, yeah. this is cover uh, colored by my buddy uh, Billy Garrettson, but uh, this was a reward tier for my Kickstarter. Um, I did a handful of commissions for backers, but. Uh, this is my design for uh, Teen Titans Rebirth on Starfire, where uh, um, the character had kind of been sexualized a little bit in the New 52. So there's a, a, yeah. a certain effort on my part to try to like kind of de-emphasize that and kind of make her more, more of a teenager, more of a leader, less of a sexual character kind of. I got gotcha. you. I don't know. Maybe I think the outfit really kind of, it's more of kind of a space disco kind of spacesuit. Kind yeah, of thing. It, it, it's a tough <laughs> outfit to work with, but still, yeah, yeah. I, I see what you by going with this profile look. It's not in your face, over sexualized. Like it's well, you took away the big uh, the boob hole of. that used to be on the. They eventually the the costume got less and less, and you started seeing this like giant yeah. gaping hole yeah. in between. In uh, especially in the Red Hood series, because like she she was with I guess Red Hood half the half the series, and with the other guy half the series. Um, or so, like yeah, it, it she, was, uh, she kind of was pretty, uh, pretty free with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> nice way to it. It's kind of like I don't know. Like as as you get older, you want to do something that's a little more. Well, here should be a little bit more aspirational, especially characters, female characters. Since there's so many female readers, you you know you want to be sensitive to that. That she's just more than just you know kind of you know that well, she, she's a leader she's this character so that's what uh ben c who d was on the show when we first started or whatever one of his big things is he goes i have daughters daughters i don't want to have anything to where they're going to look at and be question i don't want them to think i want them to be powerful i want to be super i don't yeah. want them to think of okay i gotta dress a certain way i gotta be sexualized and that like I, you definitely accomplish that she's powerful she's still a woman but mm -hmm. she's not She's not this okay. She's just a piece of meat. Like she's about to go punch the crap out of somebody, or she's taking <laughs> off. I mean, like you, you can interpret it however you want, but she's not about to go kiss the guy next door or whatever. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, I think it's just good to try to show characters in a better light. You know what I mean? Because it's I, I think when you when you're when you're working on stuff, you got to remember that this is always someone's favorite character, and and you want to try to do that character as much service as you can. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. For sure. Sure. Yeah, so to that end, I kind of grouped them. So I'm going to stick with some of your DC. Uh, oh yeah, cool, cool. That you got. So I went with a a Batman that you. Oh, you okay. My buddy Billy actually actually uh, colored this one as well, and this was a commission for somebody. Uh, it's just kind of a Batman on a gargoyle, which is atypical, but uh, kind of changed the design up a little bit. But uh, you know, I, I, Batman's one of those characters I'll probably never ever get to work on. And, <laughs> ever <laughs> so I'm like hey, well, i'm just gonna do my own take on batman because was, was it batman ninja that the little or the batman death maidens that was the manga style backwards uh book that came out in the 2000s you can do that one i don't remember that at all man do you guys know what the death maidens uh it was the, 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 the death and the maidens that was like uh, what like a nine issue uh 
I think Rob's it might be. Is that the thing? one that actually you, you're a dollar bin guy? You end up finding them in these dollar bins. Like, why is this Batman book backwards? <laughs> it's a DC tribe. Like, Death and the Maidens wasn't backwards, so it's okay, got to so be a different right. one. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying oh, to remember. I love this cover. It, it, it has a little bit of that. Uh, it reminds me of the. Was it the second second print? Uh, it's Jim Lee's second print, six oh eight. Yeah, that pose on the not not that you're homaging it by any stretch, but it just has yeah. that has Definitely. that feel, and then right. where he's in profile over, yeah, like, and one knee up, yeah. and yeah. so yeah, because yeah. I got a T-shirt of that with Superman on uh, another building, like facing this way, and then oh, nice. Batman, <laughs> like Gargoyle that way. That's the hard thing too when you're working on these iconic characters. Everything's been done, so it's always trying. Like, okay, well, what can I do that's a little bit different? That's my own take on it. It still says Batman. It still feels Batman, but it's kind of my own thing. And it's always a challenge. But I mean, like Billy did such a great job on the colors too, because like he always does localized colors and muting colors, but then he'll pick a color that creates a lot of tension. And it's just like wow, with this red and these. Magenta just kind of turns it up. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a great touch. It really is. And then I think there's another, but he's got more. It's not just Batman on this. Oh one. yes, yeah. So this was done for the Keystone show for their because uh, it was happening on Batman Day. So uh, they asked me if I wanted to do the poster for the show. I was like, yeah, sure. I was like, what is it? They're like Batman. I was like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so yes. This was, I think, my most recent take on Batman, which is more the Rebirth Batman, which. I like the rebirth costume. I just I don't like the utility belt. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand it. I was like, what? Why is it I don't know. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's cool. The so, yellow accents add a little pop to, I guess, the image. But yeah, the belt itself kind of seems a bit uh, overdone. I, I don't know. Like, it's not practical. No, it's <laughs> weird how it hangs on his body because it goes around, but then it dips down to like yeah, point it, it accentuates his hips. So, like, kind of. Yeah, because he doesn't have the undies. He doesn't have the undies to kind of define that area. So you need the belt to kind of. They can't make up their mind on that. Now they brought the undies back. I think, right? Did they? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so we can never. It's undies or no undies. Like, hey, <laughs> Batman's Batman. You know. I, I dig this. I, I love that mask. Oh, you know what? So this was a character. Is that a Teen Titans Rebirth was kind of a train wreck. So, um, but I enjoyed working on the series my short time that I was there. And uh, this was a character who led the uh, the Demon's Fist, which is supposed to be the 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 evil version of the Teen Titans. But this was his uh, this character was her name was supposed to be Oni, and somehow it got turned into Tamara Al Ghul, which is nowhere near being an Arabic. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's like I was like, you know, Mara is a Jewish name, right? <laughs> All right. And I'm like, yeah, it's like yeah, Arab, Arabic people don't name their kids that, but um, just throwing it out there. And they, <laughs> I'm like, All right, whatever you want, because isn't yeah. that supposed to be uh, Damien's sister or uh, his half sister? Cousin, cousin. so cousin. yeah, she was supposed to be just as deadly as he is, but she got, I don't know, her whole character in, in, in the thing. What she was supposed to be and what she ended up being were two different things. And it was it was kind of disappointing because you had this really good potential to have a character who's Damien's equal, but somehow in the series she's just never his equal at all. You know? Yeah. Um, it, it's sort of cool because uh we're talking to you now about Teen Titans. Two weeks ago we got to talk to Koi Fam who picked up after you left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And carried the next like three or four issues, so it's sort of, sort of cool because he, I think, he got to redesign or work on Aqualad was his sort of right. okay. This having to redesign him, so it's it's this. I love your design on her, but yeah, you're right. The character just never did what you wanted her to be, and maybe she'll reappear and be be something as a bane of his existence. But I mean, right now, yeah, like the original the original plot of that. Um, was supposed to be where it's supposed to lead up to a character. Um, we wanted to, what I pitched was like, hey, look, she should eventually either become a character called the Red X, who is kind of Damien's opposite, because Red X is from the Teen Titans cartoon. And we had talked about her trying to clone, because she wanted Damien back so bad that she cloned Damien, and that clone actually becomes Red X after she gets defeated, because she's supposedly killed at the end of the, uh, uh, the the five issue of Teen Titans Rebirth. But things changed a lot. And I was like, man, this is not what I signed up for. So, <laughs> uh, 
Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. Like, I think the, uh, in my mind, it's still like these characters are how they were supposed to be. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, what, what she could have been and what she ended up with was just kind of like, oh, man. Yeah, because I think I got one more. Teen yeah. Titans. There she is again. Yeah. Yeah. So she was uh, uh, heavily inspired by a character called Ryoko from uh, Kill a Kill. If you guys don't know what that series is. Also anime. So I'm kind of showing my anime roots here. Giving some otaku, some anime love to to my run on Teen Titans. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Then I I got Marvel up next. I want oh, a Venom yeah. cover with hey, Carnage. Hey, there you go. That is the that is the twin to Marvel Comics mm -hmm. or Marvel Action Eleven. So I can see it like kind of like a almost hey. like a mirror. Yeah, you just put them side by side. And you're like, oh, cool. Like, yeah, they're bros. Like, oh, that's cool. So yeah. Damn it. Now I need that. <laughs> you can see yeah, like, yeah, the matching pair now. You can see him in the reflection in the eyes. Oh. Like, that's oh, yeah. now I really need it. Son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I need it for like 20 bucks, man. They're still pretty cheap by comparison. So, cool. I think. I think so. Uh, but look right now. They're, they're going to go up when the show airs. They're going to go up. Yeah, that's until like, Friday. I have till Friday to get it. <laughs> do you think, well, you, you know, if you do a hot take on it, then of course it's going to go bananas. But I think when the Carnage movie comes out, the Venom 2 movie, I think these will yeah. pop up more. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of weird because like Carnage, like where he started and where he's ended up now is completely night and day too. So exactly, he's come along. Like Donny Cates has done a lot of magic on this character. So yeah, that's cool. Absolutely. And I do like the next one. This is an odd an odd book, the Street Fighter book. <laughs> yeah. So um, this is coming out next month, I think August, or I think it's no, it's this month. Oh, sometime in August. Yeah. I think, but uh, for swimsuit issues, I didn't know people still did swimsuit issues for comics, but I guess it's still a thing, which is cool. Street Fighter I, does. I got I got one last year. It was yeah, uh, they're really well done. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can't oh. think of the artist that, that did a cover like le, le, begin with an L, like the Dosha, Ladaska, or something. It, it was a really cool image. I was like, I, I want that, so I ended up getting it. They got a lot of cool, a lot of cool artists doing covers and interiors, and uh, they're like, "Hey, yeah, you want to do this issue?" I'm like, "Cool!" Like, it's these two characters: it's Cammy and I, I can't remember this character's name, live of me. But uh, I'm like, "Cool!" Kind of put them in their costumes. Like, "Well, they should be in swimsuits." I was like, "Oh, all right." So the costumes I, are yeah. kind of like swimsuits, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of swimsuits. She's in hot pants, and the other ones yeah. in like short shorts. Short. So it's like, eh, it's close enough. It's just, it's always kind of weird though. Like for me, I'm always like, how far can you push the line with it still being tasteful? So, and I think it's still tasteful. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. This is still fine. Yeah. It, it got the cool converse kind of thing going there. Like it, it, it doesn't seem like a, you're not, you're not pushing an envelope in any way here. Uh, like this is still, this still works. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So, and I dig this. Ah, uh, Judge oh, Trump. Oh yeah. my gosh, it's good. Oh, it's so uh, good. So when, when I got this job, this was, I think for, I think these are retailer incentive covers and I did, there's only four issues, um, but uh, I love Judge Dredd. I love the new Carl Urban one. And I heard there's going to be a TV series too, which is kind of nice. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Is, is Urban going to do it? I guess he has the boys. I think he's wow. going to do it. So. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Um, but uh, um, the idea I was talking with my editor and I always wanted to do something where it felt like a movie poster campaign so all these are like just static images of them standing in fire yeah. or embers and they're all just yeah like, oh, man yeah oh. so that's kind of sick yeah so um yeah big Judge Dredd fan I was like oh this is so awesome um but I wanted to do a Judge Death cover for issue four and they're like well he doesn't show up in the issue I was like who cares who cares <laughs> <laughs> No, we want this character. I said, he's a new character. No one knows who he is. I'm like, that's exactly why you should put him on the cover. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I can't sell that cover. If I put Judge Death, I can't sell that cover. Isn't Judge Death the one that looks like the Batman who laughs? Yeah, or I was going to say, everybody knows that character now, and they call right, him Batman yeah. who laughs. Yeah, so. uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, yeah, that's all good. But uh, it turned out to be some nice art, so people so, like it. I can't them. believe you didn't put Rob Snyder on one of these covers. I mean... <laughs> I kind of wanted to. That would have been awesome. But <laughs> I am the law. You know that 
I, I don't know. I, I feel bad for saying this now. I feel embarrassed. But I thought it, that movie was okay. If he had <laughs> a helmet on the whole time, it would have been perfect. <laughs> My oh, only yeah. problem with that movie <laughs> is how is Armand Asante on a clone of Sylvester Stallone when they look nothing alike? Well, they're both <laughs> short. So. <laughs> that's it. Oh, okay, they got dark hair. But, uh, yeah. It's still well done. I mean, you had Mean Machine in there and stuff like that. I thought it was pretty yeah. cool. I mean, the Car and the Carl Urban one was good, but the Carl Urban one was just strictly a follow up to the raid. It was like, here's the American yeah. version of the raid. Uh, now let's make it a little more sci fi. But uh, but yeah, I enjoyed both of them. I did I did enjoy it Stallone. It's one of my just like the, it's a guilty pleasure, just like a uh, Demolition Man. Uh, just a no, guilty I, pleasure. You enjoy watching it, and you hate to admit that you enjoy watching it. I just thought the uh, you remember the old '90s Shadow movie. Yes. Oh yes. Oh, we were Baldwin. I bought it because I remember, like, oh, it was a pretty cool movie. And I we tried watching it. My wife's like, "What is this? Like, <laughs> what evil oh. lurks in the hearts of men?" She's like, oh, no. Peter, Peter, did we have the conversation about Krull? From trying to remember that it was so awesome, or but maybe oh, John Boy, like John Boy, did I have that conversation with you? Actually, it might have been like when you watch it as a kid and you remember it, and you watch oh, it, and you're like, yeah. oh, it's not. I as thought good it was the coolest that. movie. I went back Just, to watch it. It's so terrible. Well, it's, it's like terrible. a the weapon. Is the glave is still one of the most. Oh, it's so awesome! Yeah, it is cool. Yeah. <laughs> So you can just discount the whole Cyclops. They traded eyes to see the future and the moving castle. It's kind of goofy. No, but that glaive is cool. Did you know that? He's one of what? the like fighters on the horses with them. It's like who is Liam Neeson? If you go back and watch it, he's he's one of the dudes. In there. Oh, really? <laughs> he's the he's the uh, that's Cyclops. awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait, hey, that's Liam Neeson. But yeah, I was trying to watch Shadow and I couldn't get through it. I was just like, <laughs> I think I tried doing that with the Phantom the other day. The Billy Zane Phantom. I was like, oh, this is just not as good as it, I remember it being. Yeah, man. Yeah, it, it's hard to revisit your childhood even years later. Yeah. Like, can't be. Especially when you go, there's a reason it's not replayed on TV anymore. <laughs> like, <laughs> the chat, if it doesn't make the regular routes of TNT and TBS, you're like, there's a reason. <laughs> I think shows like The Shadow would actually be a really cool TV show. Mm -hmm. HBO Max show if they did it right, you know what yeah, I mean? They did it right. And it'd be a, like Boardwalk Empire with the Shadow would be like really like that'd be free. It'd be sex and violence and all this stuff. You're just like, oh, ah, yeah. Awesome. but yeah, nothing. Yeah. I think I got a couple more for you. Yeah, I got Spawn. Uh, <laughs> oh, so you did do Spawn? No. I, I got <laughs> that was a a cover, but then I think they pulled it for some odd reason, but. I don't know. I I, I I like it. It's cool. You know what though? The I got really tired of doing spawn covers. Um, just for some of the fact that I always want to do more story driven covers for spawn. Just because like every Tom was like, no, just do a cool spawn cover jumping at yeah. it. Like, dude, you hired Greg Capullo and he worked on spawn for 10 years, man. I'm like, there's nothing <laughs> I can do that Capullo hasn't done already. I'm like, I can't. It's just tough. I can get that. I get that. It's yeah. really that's why I want to do things that are a little bit different. Like, hey, you know, let's do the anti-spawn cover where it's more spawn there, you know, more narrative driven, where it's you know, spawn a hospital bed or something like that. More <laughs> the the IVs dripping. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just it's adding more of a story element to it, which mm. is something that people didn't normally see out of spawn. Because it's really hard to do, like, because there's so many covers of spawn just being badass, you know, it's just yeah. like they all start kind of blending together. That, and, and, and that's kind of the problem. Like eventually it's like, I don't know what's going on inside the book because all the covers are cool, but I don't know what's going on. It's just. I can't tell one issue from the other. What issue was that? It's like, I don't know. It's the issue with him doing something. You're like, what issue? Is that? Well, that, and that's also why the ones where it's not him or like the she, she spawn one or the, the one with the random girl on it or tw when the, you're like, they stand down your mind because it's not spawn doing the same, the right. action pose of some sort. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But that's also kind of why I saved this one for the last. Again, a GI Joe fan, I saved uh, Snake Eyes for the last. Guys. I'm a huge uh, GI Joe fan, so uh, this is my cover to my Snake Eyes Dead Game variant, which uh, actually just came out. So it is on sale if you go to the website. Um, um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, who who did not like GI Joe growing up? I mean, exactly. And it's not just this cover; like you also got. Right, covers that goes with oh, as wow. well. You like the fade on that? Yeah, that's the. No one knew what version that was. I was like, that is the '80s helmet, and they're like, ah, yeah. 
It's the awesome. Goggles. The goggles. Yeah. We get them both. Yes. There you go. So, um, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's cool. I, I think honestly, I should have left them both white because white reads a lot better than black on black is really tough. It, it does, but I I like that they're just still distinct though. Like they, they feel more unique this way. Like you get a black yeah. one and you get a white one. See, that's a tough thing when you're doing retailer incentives because everyone wants you to have a cover B, and you're like, man, the, it's like it's hard enough to do a cover A. What am I going to do different from cover B? And it's like change some colors and slap a different head on it. Like, oh, is that is that cool? Or, or like, yeah, and it varies. From you need to sneak timber in in the background. Well, he's got a wolf with him. <laughs> I, there's no room though. Timber would be like like yeah. timber behind him. It'd be like. It can be the reflection in the sword, like Timber's coming at him. <laughs> and then you're going to wonder what's happening in the story if you do that. What I wanted to do was one of this and then do a mirror image or a storm shadow. But Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was doing it. I had like a week to do this. So I was like, okay, I just got to get this done. So, a week? Jesus, that's <laughs> a week. What? Well, originally, like, I think there was only three or four of us that signed up to do Snake Eyes covers in that short time. So, uh, like four retailers turned them all in. We had to get them all in. And then COVID happened. So then yeah. we just started opening it back up to more covers. That's how you got like 36 covers of Snake Eyes in one day. COVID. Everyone's like, well, can I do a cover? Like, yeah, we got time. <laughs> it's not coming out for a month, so you're good. Yeah, months. I was just like, if I knew I had more time, I would have done a storm chat. I was like, why don't you guys tell me? Like, well, it's an awesome cover. I was like, yeah. But, but it could have been a matching pair that people really like. Right. That's right. That's what people want. That they want, okay, like I could have had Storm Shadow then too. So they're like, we'll yeah. do an issue too. And I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's all. Good. Yeah. But like you said, this you can find, you know, over on your website. Yes. Yes. And uh, check out your Instagram too, because your Instagram has a lot of really, you even like tease images. Like you give like little, little previews of stuff. Little snippets. Yeah. We're allowed to do little. Oh. It's even though technically we're kind of not, we're allowed to, but not allowed to. So like a little square, people are not going to know what it is. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. But it, it gets people excited though. It gets me excited. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a big fan of art. Like I, I love anytime uh, people put the, like the little, even if they're accelerated, like they're drawing or they're the live images. Them, I love seeing the process of artists work. It's I just see more of that. I just, I just, I feel like it's weird because then I got to, Put a camera over my shoulder and work, and then you want to edit it and make it kind of cool. And if your lighting's not right, it looks weird. Because I see some like some of the early ones are like just horrible. <laughs> so trying to shake a camera, it's like soothing in some way. It's just like right. oh. So John Boy, we got to get you to talk about something Mike has in his hand right now. Oh yeah, sure. and I was gonna segue because oh. speaking of what's for sale on your website is, the, in my opinion, by far the most slick oh. sketchbook. Thanks, man. Oh, Seriously, yeah. I mean this this product is unbelievable. I mean it's a be beautiful hardcover book in a slip case. Uh, this particular copy provided by John Boy for us to give away tonight. So, oh, well, did do your do the other guys have a copy too? Do you guys have one? They will. Yep, okay, they will. Right. Right. Yep. And uh, so I have, I have uh, enough. Uh, thank thank you, John Boy, for sending me a few oh, of these. Wow. So the guys are going to get these, and we're going to give one copy away. Ooh. So all you have to do is uh, we want to know what your three favorite or most influential artists are. Please write that in the YouTube comments as well as on the website um, uh, on comicbookinvest.com, CBSI, in the comments. If you do it in both places, you will be entered in to win this. This is a signed copy of, uh, honestly, I have a lot of sketchbooks from a lot of artists. This is seriously the slickest version I've, I've ever seen. This is beautiful. Oh, thanks, man. All kinds of great stuff in here. Um, so, so do that and uh, we'll pick a winner on the next show uh, and we will, uh, and we'll ship this beauty out to you. So, so that's, that's that. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. Thanks. Feel good. Thanks, man. Thanks for the play. Yeah. Oh, I absolutely. Hope you guys like, like it too. When you guys get a copy. So. And if you don't win it, you can go buy it on the website. It's still available over there. Yeah. Um, Got a couple of copies left. So cool. John Boy, thank you so much for being on the show with us. Shoot, you've been talking. We've been talking for an hour and a half. It doesn't even feel like it. <laughs> oh, I mean, wow. you know, it's so it's it's surprised. been great. Like I didn't mean just, to get off topic, man. And thank you guys for educating me about like uh, <laughs> hey, we, opinion about things too. I really appreciate that. So that's I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. You know, 
Um, we also really appreciate your honesty as well. You've been you've been really forthcoming with with your info and 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 your, your feelings about stuff, and that's that's rare. It's really awesome to have that. So thanks oh, for joining no, us. I'm sure you guys feel the same way though. You're like, why is that? Like, oh yeah. I, you know what? If I see another Spider-Man 300, man, I'm just gonna lose it. <laughs> no, I know. I mean, we, we are, and we do. We talk about this stuff all the time. It's really refreshing to see that some, you know, the creators have similar similar thoughts about that stuff. Because I, I often wonder that. Like, we think this on the collector side, but do you guys also think the same thing? It's kind of nice and refreshing to see that you actually do think that, and, and that we're not crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If do something cool and original than just the same. It's just like I've already seen this. Like Tom McFarland did it like ten times, and he. Oh, each time I can't do a better job than that. Yeah, and, and I'll admit, once COVID is over and we can get back to cons and I can get back out there, I will not be afraid to come up and talk yeah. to you or any other creator. <laughs> what, what shows do you guys do? Just typically, like that, you guys all roll together. Like, hey, we're going to WonderCon. We're going to San Diego. I, I stay local. For me, I'm a South. Again, I'm in South Jersey, so I stay kind of local to me. I was going to branch out to Heroes because some of the guys were talking Heroes Con. Good. It's a good con for uh, you know, for books like. I like more the, the books than I do like the, you know, the, the pop culture, like celebrities, like eh, it's okay, but I don't care if, you know, the cast from Charmed is here. Like I'd rather see, you know, Steranko. Like that's just me personally. Well, they have, uh, they do. New York is actually pretty good for back issues, but then Baltimore is pretty good too. I don't know how close it is. to you. So, Yeah. Baltimore's not that bad for me. Baltimore's only a couple hours. But Megacon is a great show to go to guys. It's like, it's got a little bit of everything. It's pretty chill. Um, Where, where's Megacon at? It's in uh, Florida, so you can also do Disneyland while you're, or Disney World, nice. sorry, and okay. Universal while you guys are there. If you guys wanted to, so, yeah. I'm cool. I'm new to the con game. I'm, I'm, I think Peter, you've probably been more the more than I have. I've actually sold it a few shows, but I haven't actually. But everything's been really small, local. So like, the, the, if if you happen to live in, in near near around me, you might be at the show. But that's about it. Though, <laughs> I mean, I, I did when Mike did his Donny Cates interview. I was in the at the back back issue booth right beside him, just sort of laughing at him the entire time, uh, going because <laughs> there, there was one of those shows where no one was there. So Mike had like an hour and a half they could just talk to the artist because no one. Awesome. Which is really cool, but for me, I was like, I was like, I don't know it, and, I, and at that time, I would, I knew Mike, but I had no connection to CBSI, so I was like, I can't walk in here and go, well, I write for CBSI too, and I was like, <laughs> I buy books and I like books. So that's, <laughs> that's the extent of my my fan, and I I happen to have your go, uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider first appearance here. Can you sign it? But that's about the extent yeah, of my he's, fandom. He's really met him right now, man. He's really like just like, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. For me. I choose cons based on the artists that are going to be there. Cause I, I like to talk to you guys. I really do. I think that, I mean, that's probably obvious to you anyway. Um, and the books are sort of secondary to me. I just like to, I like to meet people I haven't met before that either I really admire from an artistic standpoint or that I just think are cool and different in some way. And I just want to talk to them. So I'll, I'll usually, I'll usually pick a couple of artists that I think are going to be relatively local. When I say local, like within four hours drive, uh, I'll go to a sh you know shows in like Cincinnati and Atlanta. Um, I went to Heroes Con, that, so that kind of stuff. I won't go too far away. Like I won't do the San Diego's and stuff. Oh, but, yeah. um, well, it's a tough ticket to get, but San Diego, if you've never been, you at least have to do it once. I never have. I, I, okay. I need to one day. One day when I can afford it. <laughs> if I'm Oprah rich, then if I'm Oprah rich, I'm like, hey guys, you guys can go be my guest. Sweet. <laughs> I'll work your booth. I'll sell whatever you need me to hey, sell. We will, sure, we will no. plug that <laughs> variant so it can sell for more. I want you guys to actually walk the show and experience it. It's a whole huge fan experience. I think it, it's it, it, it it's a much more pop culture show. But if you go to the dealer booths and things like that. Um, you're gonna be like, wow! I'm gonna find a lot of stuff that I I've probably never ever seen before. I yeah. can do like Dave Siemens collection. I can do this. I can do that. Um, I, I think it's something that you have to do just at least once in your life because if you can't do inside the show, there's also uh, events outside the show that you can do. I mean, it's a whole other con outside the show too, uh, just around downtown San Diego. So um, if it's something you can do and say, hey, honey, uh, I'm gonna leave you and the kids. <laughs> that's the big we, thing right now. Yeah, yeah, that's a big yeah, problem. Friends are going to do this CBSI thing together because it's work, and we <laughs> do this for the interviews for our site. Yeah. <laughs> you know, then you guys should do because I think you guys could get in there with press passes and stuff like that because you guys do so, probably yeah. something to think about. Man, you know, yeah. I'm just saying, just be kind of cool. Again. John Boy Myers, the new devil on my shoulder. Wow. <laughs>
I appreciate the time. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm really stoked to, to, to talk to you again, Mike and Peter and Chris. Thank you for having me. You guys have been great. Thank you. Thank, thanks yeah, for taking so much time with us. We really yeah, appreciate no it. Yeah, no problem. Anytime, guys. Anytime. Thank you. Cool.